I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Hello. Um, so, uh, for today's video, um, I'm gonna. I started this a long time ago, and then uh, kind of quit. Went on to other projects, and never got back to it. Um, but I want to talk about king crabs today. Um, king crabs. You're probably familiar with the uh, the term. Uh, if you go Alaskan king crab, it's pretty pretty well known. Um, these are a group of here. Let me. Here I have a. Uh, one species of king crab right here. Uh, this is a uh, called the golden king crab, Lithotis aquaspina. Um, this is a dried one that I had purchased from a fisherman and then preserved. Um, but anyway, um, I'm gonna hold on. Let me put this back. Okay. Um, anyway, I want to talk about these because uh, this is one of my my favorite groups of animal. If you see my uh, my username, uh, Lithotid man, refers to the family of crabs that these belong to, Lithodidae, who is the, is the family. And what I like about them is, is that they're actually highly modified hermit crabs. If you're familiar with hermit crabs, you know, like live, in a sh live inside of a seashell. And um, they're, uh, they're, so even though they look like a typical crab you might encounter, they're actually not really, cl they're not closely related to like other crabs like Dungeness crab or uh, blue crab or some of the other commercially harvested crab species. They're, they're actually, um, they are hermit crabs and they have a lot of features in common with hermit crabs. Um, what's really cool is though, is that we have, um, most places in the world have one or two species of lithoted crab in them, you know, usually deep water. Um, all over the world. Um, however, in Alaska, or in the North Pacific, um, we have uh, 19 species of king crab. Um, you're probably only familiar with like the red king crab, which is sold at, you know, that, that, that's the one that you get in a restaurant if you order Alaska king crab. Usually you will get the red king crab. Um, and we have, but we have several others that are commercially harvested as well. The golden king crab I just showed you, uh, with the blue king crab has a, has a limited harvest. Um, there's also a scarlet king crab, which is um, not commercially exploited. Um, and then over on the Western Pacific, North Pacific, there's a few other species too that are um, sometimes harvested for food. Um, but we also all, we have tons of other species that are some of the coolest and weirdest uh, things we have uh, that are uh, not commercially harvested because they're either too rare or too small. Um, I have I'm, I have photos of all of them. Um, I've I've collected and photographed every single species we have here in Alaska, and I will show those later on. Um, this video is going to be several parts, um, but what I want to get back to um, when I talk about king crabs, the reason I think that they're really what's an amazing about having the diversity of them here, um, you know, 19 as opposed to one or two species, is that we also have all of the transitional forms or the in, the grades, uh, organizational grades from what would look like a hermit crab to what looks like a true crab um, in the sense of, you know, the, the, the way that the, the, all of the adaptations from evolving from being a shell living hermit crab to being a shell less, I'm not using a borrowed shell, uh, lithoted crab. And, and I think that's really cool. Um, basically, we have all of these officers. It's, it's thought that these, that these evolved here in the North Pacific because of um, our high diversity of specimens. So I'm going to um, stop, and then I will continue on with just uh, narration and pictures. Um, I think this is a really, really cool story. Um, I'm going to start with um, just some, some uh, basic taxonomy um, so you kind of know where these things fit into the grand scheme of the tree of life. Um, so if it's a little, you know, might be a little slow, but I, I, I'll try to keep it interesting. So king crabs belong to a group of organisms called arthropods. Uh, these are the jointed legged animals. Um, this includes such uh, diverse organisms like the extinct trilobites, uh, spiders and our other arachnids, insects, and the uh, primarily marine aquatic crustaceans. Um, one of the things that, uh, that that's I think interesting about arthropods um, is that they're, they're, the classification, the large scale classification of arthropods, relies on the number and arrangement of head appendages. Um, for example, 
all crustaceans, um, and I'll, I'll talk about the diversity of crustacea in a bit here, but all crustaceans, no matter how, you know, barnacles and crabs, shrimp, lobsters, all have five head appendages. Um, and there's not a single exception to this rule. Five head appendages. Um, that includes two pair of antennae um, and three pairs of mouth parts. So we find that. So we, it's believed that that arrangement evolved early on in the history of arthropods and became fixed. So no matter what, how other subsequent evolution or adaptation, um, they've always retained that feature at the very least, at least in the larval state. Some of the adults um, that, that becomes uh, modified in the adult form. But during their lifetime, they have that feature. Okay, within the crustacea, uh, king crabs belong to a group called the Malacostracans. Um, this is actually really fascinating. This, these are probably the most uh, well-known of all of the, of the crustaceans because um, it includes the species that we harvest for food, uh, crabs, shrimp, lobsters, um, but also a lot of lesser known forms like amphipods, isopods. Uh, you may be familiar with roly polies, um, one of the terrestrial crustacea. Um, but most of the crustaceans you're familiar with are Malacostracans. What unites this group, uh, and I think this is awesome, is they all have 19 um, segments, and each segment bears um, a pair of appendages. So um, for each segment, there's a, it's called the somite, there's a single pair of appendages. And we find that, so you might look at something like, well, look at a roly-poly versus a... Uh, a lobster or a crab and you say what well, these very different body form but if you actually look at it take them apart and count the appendages you'll find they have that same set over and over again um, so great modification of, of body type um, however a set number of segments and appendages okay now uh, apologize for the long and lengthy taxonomic description here um, but we're just about to the end the next group I'm going to talk about um, that king crabs belong to are called the decapods. These are specifically defined as the ten-legged crustaceans. The name decapoda means ten legs. And it comes from the fact that, like all Malacostracans, they have 19 um, somites, 19 pairs of appendages. Um, and that includes uh, eight pairs of appendages on the thorax. In decapods, unlike some of the other groups I've talked about, um, the first three pairs of thoracic appendages are modified again as mouth parts. So remember the three mouth parts we talked about on the head are also the accessory appendages called maxillipeds are associated with the mouth. That leaves, remember, uh, eight minus three leaves five, five pairs of appendages on the body. That defines a decapod. The decapods are divided into two large groups based on their reproductive biology. Um, I'm not going to get into that in too much detail, but the uh, one group are the dendrobranchiata, and this might include, you might be familiar with these as the uh, go like gulf prawns, tiger prawns, um, are the main ones in that group. Um, the other group of them are called the pleosiomata, and this includes all of the decapods that brood their embryos attached to their abdomen. So this group actually includes uh, shrimp, lobsters, and such. Um, okay, that the, the pleocymates are divided into several large infraorders. Um, I'm going to go through these real briefly here. Uh, the first one is the palinura. These are the spiny lobsters, uh, pretty much confined to the tropics. Um, there's the astacida, which are the crayfish and true lobsters, or clawed lobsters. There's the caridia, which are the true shrimp. Um, there are the brachiura, which is the... Um, the brachyurans are the true crabs. And then finally the Anamira, which is the group that king crabs belong to. Okay, finally the uh, Anamirans. Um, this is a group that's characterized by having the fifth pair of walking legs greatly reduced. This is the last pair. And they're often hidden underneath the carapace. Um, so they're not used for walking. And hermit crabs, they're used for holding on to the borrowed snail shell. Um, while they're used for other purposes, uh, like gill cleaning in some of the others. Um, this group is split into two large divisions. Um, one are the Galatheoids, this is the squat lobsters and porcelain crabs, while the other are the Puggeroids, which are the hermit crabs and king crabs. Um, hermit crabs, as you may know, typically um, protect their soft abdomen by hiding it inside of a snail shell or other hollow object. 
Um, king crabs are one of the exceptions to this. I'll take this up in part two. Uh, thanks.